Benin City, 1986. Fear choked the air. The once bustling streets filled with the sounds of laughter and commerce had fallen eerily silent. The vibrant markets where vendors once called out to passers-by were now ghostly echoes of their former selves. The city, known for its rich culture and history, was now a shadow of its past. The streets, once vibrant, were now haunted by shadows. People moved quickly, heads down, avoiding eye contact. The once familiar faces of neighbors and friends were now masked with fear and suspicion. The lively chatter that once filled the air was replaced by hushed whispers and hurried footsteps. The city, once a beacon of life, was now a place of dread. A sinister cloud of dread hung over the city. No one was safe. The dark clouds that loomed overhead seemed to mirror the growing sense of unease that gripped the hearts of the residents. Every corner, every alleyway held the potential for danger. The once familiar streets now felt like a labyrinth of fear, where every turn could lead to an encounter with terror. Lawrence Anini, a name whispered in terror, had arrived. The police seemed powerless. Anini's reign of terror was swift and brutal. His name became a symbol of fear, a reminder of the city's vulnerability. The police, who were once seen as protectors, now seemed helpless in the face of this new threat. Their efforts to capture him were met with failure, and their presence only served to heighten the sense of panic. Their presence, usually a comfort, now fueled anxiety. The sight of police vehicles patrolling the streets, once a reassuring image, now filled the residents with dread. The officers, who once walked with confidence, now moved with caution, their faces etched with worry. The community, which once looked to them for safety, now watched them with a mix of fear and desperation. Anini was always a step ahead. His cunning and ruthlessness made him a formidable adversary. The police, despite their best efforts, found themselves outmaneuvered at every turn. Anini's ability to evade capture became legendary, and his actions only grew bolder with each passing day. The city was caught in a deadly game of cat and mouse, with Anini always seeming to have the upper hand. His name became synonymous with fear. The mere mention of Lawrence Anini sent shivers down the spines of the residents. His exploits were the subject of every conversation, his name on every tongue. The newspapers were filled with stories of his crimes, each more terrifying than the last. The city was gripped by a collective fear, a sense of impending doom that seemed to grow with each passing day. The city held its breath. As night fell, the streets emptied, and the city seemed to hold its breath, waiting for the next strike. The once lively evenings, filled with music and laughter, were now marked by an eerie silence. The residents, peering out from behind closed windows, watched the darkness with bated breath, praying for the dawn. The reign of terror had cast a long shadow over Benin City, and the fear was palpable in every corner of the city. Lawrence Noman Yagbon Annini, a name that sent shivers down spines. He was ruthless, cunning, a phantom. By his side, Monday Osenbor, his loyal lieutenant equally feared. They operated with impunity, their gang a well-oiled machine of terror. Banks were looted, citizens robbed. The police, outmatched and outgunned, struggled to keep up. Annini's reign was painted in blood. He killed without mercy. His name struck fear into the hearts of many, and his actions left an indelible mark on the history of Benin City. The streets, once bustling with life, became silent witnesses to his brutality. Police officers, his primary targets, they were the enforcers of the law, the protectors of the people, and yet they found themselves helpless against Anini's wrath. Their uniforms, once symbols of safety, became targets for his rage. Their bodies, often found riddled with bullets, served as warnings the body count rose. Each victim was a message, a testament to Anini's power and his disdain for authority. The gruesome scenes left behind were not just evidence of his crimes, but also a chilling reminder of his reach. Fear tightened its grip on Benin City. People stayed indoors. The once vibrant community was now paralyzed by the terror that Anini spread. Families huddled together, praying for safety, while the streets outside echoed with the silence of dread. Streets were deserted after dark. The nightlife that once defined the city vanished. Businesses closed early and the once lively markets were abandoned. The darkness of the night was only matched by the darkness in the hearts of the people who feared the unknown. The city, once alive with music and laughter, was silenced by fear. 
the joyous sounds of children playing, the melodies of street musicians and the chatter of neighbors were replaced by an eerie quiet. Benin City, a place of culture and community, was transformed into a ghost town, haunted by the specter of Anini's violence. Anini's audacity knew no bounds. He robbed the first bank of Nigeria, Sabongida, in broad daylight. Millions of Naira vanished. His escape was audacious. He became a phantom, appearing and disappearing at will. The police were baffled. Their investigations fruitless. Anini seemed invincible. His legend grew with each daring heist. The government had had enough. The pressure mounted on the police. A special task force was formed. Operation Frivolity was its name. Its sole mission capture a Nini. The net began to close. Informants whispered. Leads were followed. The police, relentless, were determined to end Anini's reign of terror. December 3, 1986. The day Benin City dared to hope again. Anini, hiding in a girlfriend's house, was finally cornered. He surrendered his reign of terror over. Ozenbor and other gang members were also captured. The news spread like wildfire. Relief washed over the city. Anini and his gang were tried in a special tribunal. The evidence against them was overwhelming. The nation watched, captivated, as justice took its course. March 29, 1987. Anini and Osenbor were sentenced to death, their execution a public spectacle. The city of Benin exhaled. Anini's reign of terror was over, but his legend lived on. He became a folk hero to some, a symbol of resistance against corruption and oppression. His story, told and retold, became folklore, a cautionary tale, a reminder of a time when fear ruled the streets. Anini's legacy is complex. He was a ruthless criminal, a cold-blooded killer, but he also exposed the flaws in society, the corruption, the inequality, his story serves as a reminder, a reminder of the fragility of peace, the importance of justice and the enduring power of hope. Anini's capture brought immense relief to Benin City. For years the city had been gripped by fear, with residents living in constant dread of the notorious criminal and his gang. The streets were unsafe and the air was thick with tension. But with his arrest, a heavy weight was lifted off the shoulders of the people. The streets, once shrouded in fear, came alive again. Markets bustled with activity, children played freely, and the vibrant street life that Benin City was known for began to flourish once more. The sense of normalcy, which had been a distant memory, started to return. The community, once paralyzed by fear, began to breathe again. The city, scarred but not broken, began to heal. Buildings that had been abandoned were restored, and businesses that had shuttered their doors reopened. The spirit of the people was unyielding, and their determination to rebuild was evident in every corner of the city. The scars of the past were visible, but they served as a testament to the city's resilience. The memory of Nini lingers. His name is etched in the annals of the city's history. A reminder of a time when darkness overshadowed the light. Newspaper clippings and old photographs tell the story of his reign of terror, a chapter that the city will never forget. His capture marked the end of an era, but the memories remain. A reminder of a dark chapter in the city's history. The alleyways where crimes were committed, the memorials for the victims and the crime scene tapes are all stark reminders of the past. They serve as a somber reflection of the pain and suffering endured by the community, yet they also stand as symbols of the city's strength and ability to overcome adversity, but it is also a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, the power of hope. The people of Benin City came together, united by a common goal to rebuild and restore their beloved city. Community events were organized and the faces of the residents, once marked by fear, now shone with hope and determination. The collective spirit of the community was unbreakable and the enduring belief in a better tomorrow. As the sun rose over the city, it symbolized a new beginning. Families gathered in parks, children played in neighborhoods, and the laughter that had been silenced for so long echoed once more. The city, though forever changed, looked to the future with optimism.
The story of Benin City is one of resilience, hope, and the unwavering belief in a brighter future.